What's poppin' slime? We are going to talk about three things today, and hopefully they're not too bad. They're actually very intuitive, um, and what that word means is that it's really straightforward to understand, and there's nothing sneaky or tricky about it. So, um, for right now, it's going to be really important that we don't just start saying words that perhaps have um, meanings in everyday life that they don't have in physics. Physics uses some pretty common words in ways that have very, very strict definitions and you can't use them interchangeably. So for example, oh my pen, okay, there we go. Distance and displacement are not the same thing in physics. Um, and then we're going to start to talk about what a vector is. That's a super important concept for us that we're going to need to kind of get a grapple on. So we're going to start with some definitions today. Then we are going to go look at three um, examples um, to help us kind of digest and um, try to understand the difference and the nuance between these words that we're gonna start using. If you don't understand these words, it's gonna be very challenging for us to continue on our study of physics. So the vocabulary is really important for us to pin down right at the very beginning. So let's do that. All right, so let's start with this word distance. This is the one that is maybe the most similar to what you use in everyday life and that's the one that you probably, if I asked you, what's the distance? You'd probably be able to tell me that without too much trouble. So the distance is the total length, total meaning we add it all up, of the path followed by an object. Okay, so you're going to say, why do I need a definition for that? And the answer is you honestly probably don't. The reason I'm giving it to you is so that when we talk about displacement, we can compare and contrast what the difference is. Because displacement is the one that gets a little bit wonky and unintuitive. So, you know, it's there because of completeness and whatnot. So let's talk about displacement. Displacement is the distance between a starting location and an ending location. And I think that's about as simple and straightforward as I can make that definition. We're gonna look at some examples to really see the weirdness that is possible when we follow this definition as precisely as physics needs. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about two math terms. These are math ideas that you probably kind of have a vague, fuzzy idea of. But we're going to go ahead and nail them down with some definitions. That way we can say these words to encapsulate a bunch of different ideas without having to say an entire sentence. You know what I mean? It's so that we can talk succinctly. Okay. So a scalar is a value that can be completely described by just, you might want to put the word just in there to, you know, a number and I might use the word magnitude or size instead of number, right? And units. It does not, does not convey any information about direction. So when we are saying scalar, it is just a number and maybe some units so that we know exactly what we're measuring it with. Um, examples of scalars would be like temperature. Um, you just say it is uh, 114 degrees Fahrenheit outside, right? No one has ever said, okay, but up or down. You know what I mean? There's no such thing as temperature left. You can't, that doesn't make sense, right? It's what's called a scalar. It's just a physical quantity that's measuring something, but we don't need to worry about a direction or location of the, the number, right? 
Um, so let's talk about the other mathematical construct that we're gonna nail down a definition for this. You can probably guess what it is, right? A vector is a value that has information about both direction and magnitude. And if you really want to match the scalar definition, you could put and units. But I mean, everything has units uh, almost. So, you know, but so vectors are numbers that require us to talk about the important part here that separates it from a scalar is direction. Um, so let's maybe talk about some examples real quick. If you say, um, my uncle lives three miles from me. Does this, if I try to get to your uncle's house and I start at your house, do I need some additional information about what to do to get there? If you say, uh, yeah, my uncle lives three miles from me, uh, go ahead and just walk there. First of all, homeboy's not walking three miles. Second of all, could you please tell me what direction to walk, right? Maybe we need to know three miles east. That would at least get me close to your uncle's house, right? So there are definitely some quantities that require us to talk about a direction to really get the full meaning of what we're trying to convey. Those are vectors. Some common things that are vectors are um, direction can be a vector, speed could be a vector. We'll talk about this in the next lesson. I probably shouldn't use this word because speed is technically not a vector, but uh, it will be, we'll fix it tomorrow. Um, what else can be a vector? Um, push, the direction you push, pushing up on something and pushing down on something are two very different things. So vectors are anything that we want to describe with a number and when the direction is important. So let's go back to distance and displacement and make one very critical distinction between the difference of these two things. Distance is a scalar. Displacement is a vector. This is the most important difference between these two quantities. And that's what we're really going to focus and hammer on in this lesson. Okay. So right now we've got a bunch of words, a bunch of fancy colors, some definitions, some, you know, underlining. Let's go look at a real life scenario that will very viscerally show you the difference between these two things, shall we? All right. Let's look at uh, distance and displacement. Example one, it says Jordan is running on a track at school. Qualitatively describe both her distance and displacement at the marked locations. So first thing, we're gonna need to mark some locations. Um, let's go ahead and mark off. I mean, you're gonna draw the whole thing right in your notes anyway, so it doesn't matter that they're not there yet. Let's go ahead and indicate um, here Actually, let's do here. Here is our starting location. We're gonna start right there. Uh, this is a high school track. So this is 100 meters. Uh, the curve is 100 meters. That's 100 meters, this is 100 meters. So let's talk about um, this location. Let's talk about this location. And then let's talk about as we round the corner and return to where we started. So I'm gonna put a, a red mark on top just so we can talk about that, okay? Let's also talk about this word qualitative because you're gonna need to, th this is a word that you should know and you're gonna need for the AP test. Qualitative means without numbers. Okay. It means we need to talk about things as specifically as we can, but we're not going to worry about is this 100 meters or is this 100.02 meters. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's some distance about 100 meters. Um, when we talk about the next slide, 
I have a time axis and we're gonna say some time. It's not really important how much time. That's what we mean by qualitative. It means we're gonna describe it, but not do too much math with it or any math with it if we can avoid it. So let's talk about Jordan running around the track without any numbers, if we can avoid it, but if there's easy numbers, oh well. And we're gonna describe both her distance and her displacement. So let's call these points, um, we'll just call the start A, this one B, this point we'll call C, and then when we get back there, we'll call that D, okay? So let's maybe make a little chart, shall we? So we'll talk about the point, we'll talk about A, B, C, and D. The variable we will use for displacement is either X or Y, depending on if we're talking about horizontal or vertical. Um, if it's not super duper important in general, we tend to use the variable X for displacement. For distance, there is a kind of, mm, standardized uh, variable people use. Don't ask me why this is. Um, actually, it, I think it comes from math. The variable is s, lowercase s. Um, s is actually path length in mathematics. So when you learn um, line integrals way later in college, uh, that will be a variable you'll learn, path integrals for path distance or path length. but We'll use it for distance for right now, so S. And we'll measure both of these things in meters. We'll put little meters there just in case. All right, so when we are at the start, we're right here, haven't gone anywhere at point A. If we haven't gone anywhere yet, what's the distance from the start or the displacement from the start? Here, the, the difference doesn't really matter. And you're probably screaming at the, the screen, Mr. Barton, teach faster, please, I'm not dumb. Right, I, I understand kids, but this, be, very quickly, you're gonna go from I'm not dumb to, oh my God, please slow down, I'm so dumb, right? And you're gonna say that even though you're probably the smartest kid in school, but like, calm down, you'll, you'll be okay. So when you are at the start and you haven't gone anywhere, we just say that that's zero meters from where we started, right? You're at zero, that's the beginning. I'm zero meters from where I started. Okay, so then Jordan runs all the way down that straight and now she's at B. So B, because we know the distance of this thing right here is 100 meters, we can go ahead and put, she is 100 meters from where she started. So that would be displacement For her distance, the length of this line is also 100 meters. Okay, great. Now Jordan rounds the corner, follows this way, and then runs the other straight to C. Let's start with distance. This curve is 100 meters, and this straight is 100 meters. So we've gone one, two, 300 meters. That is the length of this long line. We are not 300 meters from where we started though. Displacement is just a line from where we start to where we are or where we end. That line goes from here to here. So while your distance, this path length is 300 meters, your displacement is definitely not 300 meters long. Um, I looked it up, this is 160 feet. I think it's almost 49 meters. Yeah, that's ugly. Let me make that that nice pink so it matches. Um, and let's also scoot this over. I'm rounding a tad bit, but qualitative, right? It's about 49 meters. Okay, then Jordan rounds the corner this turn is 100 meters, just like this side is. So now her total distance, every single high school track, I think, in the U.S. is 400 meters. It's weird that in the United States we use meter tracks. 
because we don't use the superior metric system for anything else. That always rustled my jimmies. I don't get it. Why can we make high school tracks correctly, but we can't make anything else correctly? I don't get it. Let's talk about the tricky one here. Jordan started here, and she ended in the exact same spot. So if I try to draw a line from where I started to where I ended, I don't draw a line, right? It's just a point. So we are zero meters from where we started. So if you form a closed complete path and you end where you begin, your displacement is zero meters. That is kind of the least intuitive thing that, and some students really have trouble wrapping their head around it. I think if you just go back to these definitions, distance is path length, displacement is distance between the start and the end. If you can remember those two differences, then you should be able to get this pretty accurately every time. You shouldn't really mess this up too often. But again, I think it's weird that you have to have such specific vocabulary in physics when you're not forced to use such specific vocabulary in math until now, really. Um, it's just part of growing up, kids. You, you've got more responsibility. You've got more, um, you know, stuff put on you. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Um, it's just growing pains. You know what I mean? Uh, you didn't think life would be as easy as high school is, right? It, you've got to learn the differences, and you've got to learn that words mean things someday. You can't just say whatever you want without repercussions. If you do, th then every single social media platform bans you because you incite uh, violence at... Play I digress. Anyway, uh, carrying on. Let's talk about distance and displacement again. Okay. So here we have another uh, example. Uh, I apologize for all my examples being sport examples. Um, I don't really know when else you guys would be running around to and fro so vigorously. Um, marching band, maybe? I, I maybe could have done marching band, but um, I didn't want to draw a marching band. So second example. This one is not going to be quite as qualitative. We're going to make some graphs. Uh, again, you see how it says time? Some time. Don't worry if it's one second or five seconds. We'll worry about that later. For right now, we want to kind of focus on distance and displacement. So it says Tommy is running drills for football. One play has him run downfield 20 yards, pauses for a moment, run back. This should probably say pause, right? Pardon my English. Run back. Four, uh, five yards, then immediately turn around and run downfield 10 more yards. So let's doodle that on this little uh, football field that I've drawn here. We'll say Tommy starts right here. We'll, we'll mark this as zero yards. All right? We made the, the track in meters. Why can't we make this field in meters? How silly. So here's zero yards. Tommy is going to run downfield or up if you will. He's going to run towards the end zone, 20 yards. And we'll mark each of these as, let's do 10 yards, 20 yards, and then 30 yards. Hopefully, we're not making any big plays today. So he's going to run downfield 20 yards. There. That's our first uh, travel, if you will. He's going to pause for a moment. So for a little bit, he's going to be here. Um, I'm going to maybe just draw a little horizontal to show that he's staying in the same spot because um, I don't want to backtrack on this arrow and make it all messy. Okay, So he's going to pause there for a moment. He's going to you know, turn and look. It's a fake. He's, oh, I'm going to catch the ball. You better block me. Sports, am I right, you guys? He's going to run back five yards. So five, these are in ten, so we'll run back halfway, all right? He's going to run back five yards, then immediately turn around and run downfield 10 more yards. Uh, I'm going to mm, be very careful about this. All right. Slight little thing just so we don't overlap too much. Back 10 more yards. Okay. All right. So there's what he's going to do. Uh, maybe we'll... Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry about that. I'll, I'll put a head wor headphone warning. Um, if, you, if you just had your eardrums blown out by my inconsiderate dog, don't worry. She'll never make that sound again. Um, all right, so let's, let's finish talking about this. So what we're gonna try and do here is we're gonna try and make a qualitative, meaning we're not gonna put too many numbers. We're not even gonna number the, the time axis or the X axis, but we'll call it the time axis. It's got a name. Um, and we're gonna graph our distance and our displacement. So let's go ahead and do that. For our distance, Actually, I, I lied. Let's start with displacement because I feel like the way I've drawn this with the arrows going forward and backwards, the direction of these arrows is not just the same every single time. So clearly I meant for the, the arrows to mean something when I drew forwards and backwards. Which one of these cares about direction? Displacement. So let's start with the one I clearly intended to graph by drawing this, and then we'll go take a look at distance. So for displacement, we're gonna run 20 yards. Mm, we're gonna say right there is about 20. So we'll have him run 20 yards, okay? Then he's gonna pause for a moment. All right, let's, uh, if he pauses, he's gonna stay the same distance away. So we'll draw like a little, a little horizontal. All right, then he's gonna run back five yards. So if our displacement is how far we are from the beginning, if I look at him after Tommy runs back five yards, from where he started, he's right there. We're at 15 yards, so we need to come back down a little bit to go and return to 15 yards. So let's see, maybe half, half again, we'll come to about right there. Again, qualitative, it's not the most important thing. That might be a little long, but oh well. Then it says, then immediately, so we're not gonna have this little pause anymore. We're just gonna have a real sharp pointy graph like that. Turn around and run downfield 10 more yards. So let's see, what would half of this be? About that much? So we're gonna run about double this back the other direction. There we go. So this would be our displacement graph for Tommy as he's running this drill. He runs 20 yards downfield, pauses, comes back five, and then continues downfield 10 more. All right, let's look at our distance graph. So Tommy is going to run down the 20 yards. All right, that's gonna be the same on both graphs, more or less. And we'll even try and make it about the same there. He's gonna pause. If he's not moving, he's not gaining any distance, right? He's still, he's not extending his path. He's just stopped there. He's maybe spun around. He's got his hands up like he's trying to catch something to fake out the defender. So a little pause. Then he's going to run five yards downfield. Okay. Or not downfield, returning upfield. So I'm not good at football, sorry. So this time... If he runs five yards, we don't care for distance what he's doing. We're just adding on five more yards of total path length. So instead of coming back down, your distance will continue to extend up five. Then he's going to turn around and run 10 yards. So he's got to run another 10. So if this is five, we got to go about double that. One two. There we go. So here we can see we have our 20 yards in this section. We have our pause. We have the five yard displacement and then we have another 10 yards. Both of them are positive because we don't care what direction he's running. We just care that he is running and covering ground. Okay, cool. Not so bad. Pretty cool, right? You're just thinking, no, this is not cool. What's cool is anime, video games, marching band. This is not cool, Barnes. I, I disagree. I think it's pretty neat. All right, let's do one more example, and then we'll send you on your way. All right, last example. I, I like these. These are fun, um, and those of you who are like, I like to write fan fiction, but not talk about it. 
this is the example for you. All right, so what we have here is just a displacement graph. There you go, that's a displacement graph, right? What we need to do is we need to turn it into a distance graph and then come up with some explanation that could, you know, what, what is this graph of? That's the, that's the creative part. We get to write a story. So let's do the, the fun part first. Let's do the math first. Then we'll do the boring lame part and we'll write a story. So whatever this is, this person is going some distance away from something. Okay, that's easy. This flat part, just like back here, this seems to indicate some kind of pause, like they're not moving, like they're stationary and they're sitting there for something. So if they're sitting here, we're not traveling any distance. Um, I can think of a very cool math way to make this happen with and make this not do that, but maybe I'll put it as a bonus question or something. That'd be cool. All right. So we'll we'll say they're they're not moving, whatever that is. When I write the story, they're gonna be not moving, so that I'm right. All right. Now this person starts going back the direction they came, passes where they started, and goes a little bit farther. So we don't really care that they're going back the way they came. That's what this downward slope means. We just care that they're moving, so they're covering more distance. So this chunk we need it to be the same distance from here to here, but we want it to just add on. So it's gonna go up instead of down. Fair enough. So this is gonna go up, uh, that looks like maybe twice. So let's see, that would be that far. Oh, this graph's gonna get really tall. All right, we'll say that's twice, I'm approximating. All right, they go twice the distance. Then, they turn around pretty quick and go back to where they started. Well, they're moving still, so we're just gonna add some more distance on there. I might make the, let me just make the slope, or actually, let's just use a different color so we can tell the segments, right? There we go. Okay. Then they pause again, they, they stop. All right, cool. So they stopped for a little while, and then they went the direction they were going the first time away from wherever they're starting. And then there's an arrow there, so they just keep going. Um, in physics, we probably shouldn't really have arrows necessarily. Um, just because the arrow means it continues that way forever in math. Have you ever gone forever anywhere in your life? And you're gonna say, yeah, when we drive to my Tia's house in Juarez, it takes forever to get there. Okay, that, that's a hyperbole. Okay, let's English class for a moment. You're exaggerating. That didn't literally take you forever. In real life, forever does not really exist. There is nothing with infinite anything in real life. So this is maybe a little bit of bad physics on my part, but you'll have to pardon me. I also teach math and it's just a bad habit. So the important part is we're going away for a long time. So there we go. Cool. So there's our distance graph. Now we have to do the lame part and we're going to write an explanation of what happened here. So um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I kind of had like I had a story in my head and you're going to be like, great, a Barton original fan fiction. Uh, it's not a good story. It's an easy, cheesy, beautiful cover. I'm just kidding. Uh, example for a physics class, right? If you want to read my real stories, um, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't even know where you post fan fiction. Uh, follow my live journal. Is that still a thing? Do people still use that? Um, all right. So my um, story that I had in my head when I made this graph is you're driving somewhere. So you get in your car and you leave your house and you get right here. You realize that you forgot your binder full of magic cards. You can't go play magic at the store with your buds if you don't have your binder full of 
sick cards. How are you going to cream those nerds if you don't bring your power nine? I have no idea. So you had to go back home to get your magic cards but you missed the turn because you were so ticked off that you forgot your magic cards and now you're gonna be late to play magic with the boys that you missed the turn and you accidentally go too far so you you know go down the wrong street turn around come back get to your house run inside real quick and grab your magic cards and then you book it to the store to play magic with the homies so let's let's write that uh you Get in your uh, sick whip to play magic uh, with the boys. You realize you forgot your favorite deck. Stop and turn around. Uh, in your infinite rage. But Mr. Barton, you just said there's no such thing as infinite in real... Uh, shh, I know what I said, kid, but you've never forgotten your magic cards at home. In your infinite rage, you miss the turn. And uh, go too far. Two O's for excessive two. Too far. You turn around. Snatch the deck. ASAP. And then drive at a safe at a safe and responsible speed to your and I'm going to teach you an abbreviation that we use. Uh, if you're in the know, if you're uh, colloquialism, if you will, local gaming store. Cool. I'm glad that I could include you in one of my favorite hobbies. Now go forth, children, and discern the difference between distance and displacement. Graph verily and write six stories about the homework that I make you uh, narrate for a graph. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in the WebEx. Until then, have a chill day. Uh, be excellent to each other. See you guys next time.